Well, it's finally happened at long last. Steve Barkley has said the quiet part out loud. There's just a quick sequence of events that's happened online in the last couple of days that you need to be familiar with. Now, the original tweet has been deleted, so sadly I can't show it to you. But in a now deleted Twitter post, Norfolk and Waveney Integrated Care Systems, or ICS, and I will link their Twitter account in the description as well as all the other sources uh, that we're talking about today, put up a tweet where they were talking about patients who had abdominal pain that they couldn't get to the bottom of, so-called undifferentiated abdominal pain. And this was a post that effectively said, abdominal pain, think physician associate as a member of the GP team that they could come to and receive help to try and work out what was going on. Now, predictably, this led to quite a significant amount of backlash because for those who don't know, Abdominal pain is one of the trickiest undifferentiated symptoms to deal with in medicine because there are so many different things that can cause people to have abdominal pain. Many of them are very, very tricky to diagnose, but many of them can be very serious, if not fatal. And that's why having abdominal pain investigated thoroughly right from the beginning is really important. Now, because of the significant amount of backlash that this tweet received, this account has since issued, I'm not gonna say an apology statement because it's not, but a further post commenting on the feedback they received and why they posted what they did. However, they have shown in their own replies to tweets that they don't really understand or don't seem to appreciate the seriousness of the backlash they were getting and why they've kind of doubled down to a certain degree. But importantly, this tweet was actually raised in Parliament. Speaker, the Secretary of State didn't mention an increased plan in the number of physician associates. The Norfolk and Waveney Integrated Care System has posted this. Got abdominal pain that isn't going away? A physician associate based in your GP practice can help. They are highly skilled at diagnosing conditions. I asked the Secretary of State after the tragic case of Emily Chesterton, who was misdiagnosed after seeing a physician associate twice in GP practice and no GP at any point. So I want to stop there before we continue with the rest of it because there's there's a couple of things just to pick apart. The first thing is I don't think it is helpful and actually I don't think it's helpful of, of Barbara Keeley here to focus on when a single practitioner has made a mistake and then holding the entire profession accountable for that right. The problem is with that is you can apply it in any situation to any healthcare worker. Um, you know, you could just as well level the same thing at doctors. Doctors make mistakes every day. Um, that's normal, we're not infallible. Um, and we don't tar all doctors that way. Nor do we do that with paramedics or nurses or anyone else who makes mistakes. So the important thing, especially with that Emily Chesterton case, which is a very sad case of a lady that was misdiagnosed um, with a PE. I think the learning point from that is, t is two things, is because she was a repeat attender in that case, and this is what Barbara Keeley gets at, which I think is correct, she was a repeat attender and should not have been seen by a physician associate twice. That is not good practice. Because she was a repeat attender for the same issue, she should have been seen by a GP. But the second thing to say there is about the degree of supervision, because all physician associates, as per guidance from everybody that has anything to say on the matter, including the Faculty of Physician Associates, the Royal College of GPs, Royal College of Physicians, etc., etc., says that PAs are dependent practitioners and must be supervised at all times. In that Emily Chesterton case, someone signed a prescription for the propranolol that was ultimately given and may have contributed to her death. We're not hearing anything about what happened to whoever signed that prescription and who was supervising the PA or not supervising, um, as may have been the case in this instance. So it was a very sad case and there are lessons to be learned from that case, which I can talk about more in another video if people would find that useful, if you've not heard about it. But I don't think denigrating every working PA because of that case in isolation is a good idea, but let's continue. When will lessons be learned that the NHS workforce cannot be safely expanded by this route of associates with only two years medical training? 
Uh, well, all clinical roles need to have the right uh, regulation uh, around it, and, and we need to ensure that patient safety is at the fore. But Very good. Um, I actually, for, for once in a while, agree with Mr Barclay that all healthcare workers should be regulated. That includes PAs and the other associate professionals. However, again, important we realise that that is obviously little to do with PAs themselves, that is everything to do with not just this government, but a successive series of governments that have chosen to deploy unregulated healthcare professionals seeing patients. That to me is where the fault lies. The reason why regulation exists is to keep patients safe, ultimately, and the decision to plow ahead with deployment despite lack of regulation is purely and simply on the government. And you can extend that further to the Royal Colleges, etc that continue to promote that expansion despite lack of regulation. But that's a decision that's probably been made while trying to bolster the workforce. So the question is, is do we go for maximum safety or maximum bums on seats as quickly as possible, see as many patients as possible? It seems that general direction of travel is towards the latter option there. The Honourable Lady gives a very good illustration. Uh, whilst the party opposite talks about reform, when it comes to reform of new roles, when it comes to having new roles in the NHS, when it's about having a ladder of opportunity for people to come into the NHS, the physician associates are people with master's degrees. The I'm just going to stop there. Every single graduating doctor has a master's level degree. The MBBS is a master's degree. And whatever Steve Barclay comes on to say next, I would just like to point out the very deep irony that Steve Barclay has previously justified in talks with the BMA the justification for physician associates starting on a band seven um, in some cases which is a significant amount of money more than a junior doctor would start on or a new uh, newly qualified doctor I must very much point out is not anything to do with PAs again that's not a choice they made that is how the government has decided to value the role against the agenda for change banding system Good for PAs, I don't want to see a world in which they're paid less. We don't need to bring anyone down because doctors pay is rubbish, but I do want to point out the deep irony in Steve Barclay saying that PAs should be valued and are considered highly skilled because they have master's degrees when he continues to specifically devalue doctors, every single one of which has a master's degree level qualification as an absolute minimum in order to even leave medical school. These are people that are highly skilled. Of course we need to get the regulation right, but the party opposite talks about reform, but when it comes to standing up to the trade unions, it's not willing to do so, and that's why when there is an innovation like physician associates, they want to block it. Hold, hold. Question. And that there, that is the absolute death knell of what he's saying because the emphasis there that he's bringing on bringing in physician associates and I know that he's not kept that to physician associates specifically he was talking about innovative healthcare roles but it's that emphasis on sticking it to the unions reducing the monopoly that doctors have over the practice of medicine because we are too bolshy, too mobile, and too pushy. And this should serve, I think, as a really, really stark warning, not just to PAs, but to the other associate professionals as well, so surgical care practitioners and anaesthetic associates. This is how the government sees you. And I would wager that 99.9% .9 of you, hopefully it's 100, have not come into your work with the goal of destabilizing the medical workforce and the idea that doctors will continue to represent leadership within the medical team and the pinnacle of expertise in medicine. The overwhelming majority of people will be here to do a good job and to try and help patients. But this is the same thing that many doctors are getting upset about, this idea of scope creep, that people are being deployed in roles that they might not either be suited for, indemnified for, or trained well enough for, and patients may be put at risk if people overstep their boundaries, and it's not clear where those boundaries are right now with the lack of formal scope of practice. And this is a very genuine plea to be careful. I have many friends who are now working as PAs that I originally went to university with before medical school. 
I've helped a handful of PAs get into PA school. You guys are vulnerable to being used as gap fillers and direct substitutions for doctors, which is absolutely not appropriate and goes against the guidance of the Faculty of Physician Associates themselves. You must not be used as a direct substitution for doctors, but it is clear that there are certain people in the government that would wish PAs to be used in that way. And I'm not sure that Steve Barclay meant to let that slip, but just watch out for yourselves and make sure that you are not being put in a position that is inappropriate, that makes you uncomfortable, or is indeed used to destabilize your local medical workforce. So thank you very much for watching. As always, please be sure to hit the like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe, and let me know what you think down in the comments below. Take care, and I'll see you next time.